Hello everyone, it's Ivy. Welcome back to my channel. If you were here last week, then you would have seen my lookbook video. A cottagecore vibe, nature-y, and floral lookbook that embraces all of the wonderful feelings of summer. This week I'm taking you through the process which I used to plan my video and photo shoots for my brand, while also showing you some of the behind the scenes footage from last week's lookbook video where I showcased my Fresh Blooms enamel pins collection. When I designed this collection, I had really wanted to capture the essence of summer. That feeling where no matter where you look, there is new life springing into place. This collection was actually inspired by many of my summer bike rides around the neighborhood and spotting different flowers everywhere. I have wanted to create a collection to embrace the beauty of wildflowers and how with only some sunlight and rain, they just burst into existence. Like nature's little surprise for all of us to enjoy. Step 1. Finding and defining the idea Whenever I want to plan a video or photo shoot to share my products with the world, the first step is always coming up with an idea. While I do have a lot of different ways of coming up with ideas when I design projects, I usually come up with my photo and video ideas when I am laying in bed trying to fall asleep, which is why I probably have such a hard time falling asleep. When this happens, I'm usually left with two choices either getting up and doing some sketches or taking out my phone and writing down my ideas. This might sound kind of random to you, but when I was in school, I had done a paper on overcoming creative blocks. And it seems like many creatives often do come up with their greatest ideas during times of relaxation or when they're not meant to be thinking of much. So if you're ever stuck, try going for a walk or taking a shower and letting your subconscious do the work for you. Anyway, when I had come up with the vision for this particular shoot, I got up in the middle of the night to do some sketches so that I wouldn't forget the next morning. Usually these sketches end up being quite scribbly, so I usually take some time to figure out all the details that have been missing from the night before. Now, some things I think about at this time are, what am I trying to communicate with this video? What are the feelings that I am trying to convey? And of course, what can I do to communicate these ideas? I knew that I wanted the video to be very natural and effortless, just like the way wildflowers are. I wanted the video to feel warm and soothing to the soul, like a gentle breeze on a summer day. The main takeaway I wanted to communicate was that even though wildflowers are only with us temporarily, these flower pins can keep that feeling of summer around all year long. I knew that I wanted the scenery to have a lot of nature along with a slight warm tint to give the feeling of warmth. I wanted the clothing in the lookbook to be flowy and relatively simple so that the pins can stand out. And I wanted there to be lots of texture so that we can emphasize the feeling of nature and summer. I either write down my ideas in detail or create sketches to depict the scenes, kind of like a storyboard. This may include ideas about camera angles, poses, and what the background might look like. This really helps me keep my thoughts organized so I can figure out all the other pieces of the puzzle. And it can also act as a visual reference during the shoot so I can keep track of everything that's happening. If I am working with a professional for that particular shoot, then sometimes I use these sketches to communicate with the photographers and videographers. Step 2. Putting together a mood board. Back when I was doing design for clients, I would put together beautiful mood boards for various projects. But since this is just for me, I just kept things simple and put together a Pinterest board. In situations where you're working with someone else, having a visual reference for what you're going to create together is very helpful because no matter how detailed your description and explanations are, there's a huge chance that you are both picturing something different. Having a mood board ensures that everyone is on the same page. Step 3. How is this coming to life? At this time, you're going to want to figure out who's going to be working on this. Are you the only one bringing this project to life or will you be hiring someone to help you? Since I knew I wanted a professional look, I decided to hire someone to help me out with this project. The team I decided on was the same team that did the videography for my wedding, Velour Productions. I really liked their style and thought it would be perfect for this video, especially since their specialty is video. Some things that I take into consideration for this step of the project are location, so basically thinking about which videographers and photographers I have access to in my city, costs, are the project estimates within my budget, style, do their portfolios match the style I'm going for. When I reached out to them, I explained my idea in detail, including some rough ideas for scenes that I wanted to shoot. 
I knew I wanted a scene of our model walking through fields of long grass and plants, a scene where she might be having a picnic or sitting in a field, and lastly, a scene of her interacting with nature. This could be something like touching some hanging leaves or smelling some flowers. I also shared some inspiration videos that were similar to the style that I was going for, and of course, I also sent them my Pinterest board. After exchanging some emails, Valor was able to get back to me with a project timeline, a breakdown of all the concepts we discussed, a list of scenes, and their own version of the mood board to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of art direction. Step four, finding the location. Of course, if this was an indoor shoot, we'd need to either rent a studio or go to the studio of the videographer or photographer. But since this was an outdoor shoot, the team and I brainstormed some potential locations for our shoot. There was a park in my mind that I thought would be very perfect for this shoot. I remember that it had long grass and pretty flowers, but when I went there to scout out the area, the flowers were already gone and the long grass was actually so long now that it would have covered up the entire model. So this ended up being a no-go. Luckily, the team at Valor found some amazing locations for us to shoot at, so that was perfect. Step five, deciding on a model. This was kind of a tough decision for me because although I've modeled for my own photo shoots in the past, I've actually never done my own video shoots before, um, you know, not, not counting YouTube or anything. I wanted to make sure that my vision comes to life with this one and I just don't feel like I am the person for this lookbook. And I think I prefer just being on the sidelines watching this one unfold, especially since I'm not too sure how I could act in the way that I want the video to be. I have another photographer friend who I've shot with multiple times and she usually gives me a lot of tips to make sure that we get the best shots possible and I really appreciate her for doing this because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, I'm really just an artist who sits in front of a desk all day making creative things happen. So I really appreciate her for that. For this shoot, however, since there was so much uncertainty about how I wanted everything to unfold, I preferred standing on the sidelines, making sure everything I envisioned was happening. So I decided to hire a model for this. In terms of hiring a model, there are several ways you can go about doing it. Of course, if you have any friends who are comfortable in front of a camera and they have the look that you're trying to achieve with your project, then by all means, go ahead and ask them. This is my friend Charles. Thank you so much, Charles, for joining me on that shoot two years ago. You're so wonderful. To this day, a lot of people ask me who Charles is, whether he's my business partner or my boyfriend, husband, um, but he's just my friend, guys. Um, my husband is actually really camera shy, so luckily I had Charles for the shoot, so thank you, Charles. Um, for this shoot in particular, I didn't have any friends in mind that I felt would be a good fit, so I decided to go on a hunt for the perfect model. In my hunt for the perfect model, I did some exploration with freelance models and models who are with an agency. I started my search by looking through my friend's portfolio and seeing what models she's been tagging and what agencies she's been working with because I'm always in awe of her amazing photography skills. But if you're looking for a model for your project, some other good places to look are Instagram or even just googling what agencies are in your area. So what I've learned from this project is that freelance models usually charge either an hourly rate or day rate and that is a one-time fee, um, whereas a model with an agency will charge you that same one-time fee. Depend well, they all have different rates, but they will charge you that one-time fee plus an agency fee and also usage fees, depending on where you're going to be using these photos or videos. So that might be something like print and advertising. So if you are posting these images outside of your social media, or perhaps you're boosting your social media um, post, then you will be needing this additional usage fee, which from my inquiries are approximately upwards of a thousand dollars Canadian dollars um, with an additional agency fee per year that you have these ads running. 
Since I was planning to use these pictures for many years to come and will likely be boosting some posts on social media and paying for some ads, it just didn't make sense for me to go with an agency for this one, especially since um, the profit margin on these pins are actually not that high. It just doesn't really make sense to spend an additional thousand dollars per year on top of what I'm already spending for this video shoot. Of course, there's also the option of reaching out to influencers to see if they would be interested in joining you for your shoot. I did reach out to an influencer for a project quote, but she never got back to me, so I can't really comment on this. The model I decided to go with was Rachel Dunn. Um, she's so beautiful and so amazing. I'm so thankful that she was able to join us on the shoot um, because I thought she was just perfect for the whole look that I was trying to create. Once you have your model ready, the next thing to think about is makeup and hair. Do you want to hire a makeup artist or hairstylist for the shoot or are you comfortable with the model doing it herself? And of course, is the model comfortable doing her own hair and makeup? Uh, luckily for me, um, Rachel was comfortable doing her own hair and makeup. And when I looked through her Instagram, I was really happy to see that her natural kind of everyday look was absolutely perfect for this shoot. Um, I just kind of wanted like her natural waves and kind of almost a little bit messy hair and just her very natural makeup look. So everything worked out perfectly there and I didn't have to hire any makeup artists or hairstylists. But if you yourself are thinking of hiring someone for your shoot, what I've learned from my research is that hiring a makeup artist might cost somewhere around $100 her look that you are doing and of course I think if you want the artist to come with you on the day of the shoot depending on the length of your shoot the cost might vary um, but I do think that it's worth it if you are doing portraits close-ups or perhaps you're doing a very particular look where the makeup would really bring the style together step six gathering your outfits and props since I was creating a lookbook, of course, I will need some outfits. Um, I had actually been eyeing these dresses on Olive Clothing for some time now, so that was really straightforward and easy for me to do. But in terms of the accessories and like purses, hats, and whatnot, um, I did have to do a little bit of digging there. And since we started planning this shoot midsummer. we didn't really have that much time left. If I wanted to shoot all of the nature flowers and greens and everything, we had to make sure we get our shoot done before the end of summer when the season changes and then we get all this rain and cold. So I didn't have much time to think about the accessories. What I ended up doing was looking at local retailers, Amazon, and places that shipped really quickly. Like I mentioned previously, I wanted to use a lot of textures in our lookbook to create that summery vibe. I created this with the linen and cotton textures of the clothing, paired with the straw textures in the various purses, hats, and picnic baskets. What I ended up doing was I actually ended up putting all the product images together so that the team at Velour could also have a copy of all the outfits and props that we were using for each scene. The one thing I didn't think too much about was the shoes because um, in all of my storyboarding, I didn't really think that her feet would be in any of the shots and if they were they weren't going to be a huge focal point so what i did was i actually asked rachel if she was willing to bring her own shoes for the shoot she said yes thank you and i just asked her to wear white sneakers if she had those available some other items i needed for the shoot were books for the picnic and of course food for the picnic um so i made sure to prepare those and I actually also wanted some fresh flowers to decorate her picnic blanket with. So I ended up getting some fresh flowers on the day of and putting them in this little jar that I brought. I just arranged the little flowers right before we shot the scene. Step seven, shooting the video. The awesome thing about having a model rather than modeling for your own project is being able to see the project unfold and your ideas coming to life. 
Apart from giving little suggestions for each of the shots or requesting certain shots, my job was to make sure that everything was in the right place. So if there was a fallen hair, I would help brush it back or perhaps to adjust her dress just to make sure that all the little details were in place because the photographer and videographer were busy doing their own thing, making the scenes happen. So I wanted to do my part to make everything as perfect as possible. Apart from that, I just needed to be present and to make sure everyone had everything they need for all of the different shots. Since we were shooting at two different locations, I had packed everything we needed for the first scene into a bag and left everything else in the car. The first scene was the one where our model was interacting with nature. The team at Valor actually suggested that perhaps the model could do some photography and sketching at the park in addition to smelling the flowers and touching the leaves to create more personality, which I absolutely loved. In my bag, I had put together sort of an emergency kit with some hair ties, hair clips, some safety pins, and a comb, and some extra pins in case any of those were needed. I also brought a sketchbook and a pen for the sketching scene. The one thing that I had forgotten to pack was water. Um, I didn't bring any water or snacks and we were out all day. It was so hot and I was honestly dying by the time we went to our second location. But um, luckily when I sneaked off to buy the fresh flowers, I was able to pick up some water and some snacks for everyone. Um, but I felt really bad because on my way to the second scene, I actually got lost. I went in the wrong direction. So everyone had to wait for me because I had all of the props in my car. I'm so sorry, everyone. Such a fail. <laughs> The second and third scene were filmed at the same location and it was quite a walk from the parking lot. We filmed the second scene where Rachel walks through the long grass on the way to the picnic location. Since we were quite far from the car, it made more sense to bring all our things with us for this one, so I held on to all the picnic props while the second scene was being shot. We aimed to have the picnic scene around sunset, so after shooting the field scene for an hour or so, the timing was perfect. It was so beautiful being next to the beach, listening to the crickets, and watching the birds fly by. Here's us wrapping up for the day. I was totally oblivious that Victor was taking a video and was just cleaning up because by that point, all I could think about was dinner. It was a pretty tiring day, but I had so much fun watching all my ideas come to life. We actually met up one more time at Velour Productions Studio to <laughs> capture a scene of just the pins by themselves. And me and Victor had played around with all of these different layouts of spreading the flowers. And this was what we came up with. Once we had all the footage, all that was left was to wait for Velour to put everything together. Once they sent me the first cut, we did some feedback and revisions and eventually everything was good to go. I am so thankful for having such a great team to tackle this project with. Thank you Velour Productions and thank you Rachel. And thank you to all of you for sticking by to hear my story. I hope that these little behind the scenes thoughts will help you plan out any projects that you're hoping to create either through video or through photo. I know this might feel quite different from my usual studio vlogs where I pack orders and design things on the computer, but the truth is my work does vary quite a bit from day to day. I'm always doing different things, so I hope that this kind of also spices things up for you a little bit. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I do create weekly videos related to art and my creative career, so make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified whenever I create new content. I'd really love to have you along for this journey. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you all next week.